gonna turn it around He's gonna work in your favor Late in the midnight hour God's gonna turn it around And around And around And around And around And around Welcome to Liberty Ministries. We're glad you're here this morning. This morning we're going to be looking, continue looking into Exodus. And we're looking to where God has brought the children of Israelites out of Egypt. Brought them to the mountain. And God wants to talk to them there. He wants to have fellowship with them there. And the fellowship literally scares them to death. Because they're scared to death of the thunder and the lightning that is taking place in the mountain. And Moses goes up and talks to God and comes down with a, a book, 10 guidelines, 10 rules. On those 10 guidelines, those 10 rules, we're to live by. Now, most countries, most societies have adopted most of these rules. That's how important they are. And God says, my people will live by these. When he comes down, a lot of things were going on. They were distressed because they felt like God had left them. And yet, God was right there at the presence. So we see him giving the commandments of God to the children of Israel. Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God. Who has brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage? You shall have no other gods before me. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. And God, we give you the praise and the glory. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for your love, your admiration, your sanctification, your salvation, and Lord, your blessings that you put upon us. And Father, we ask you to let us take this to heart and let it be upon us as you have said in your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now the Ten Commandments, the Lord tells us to put them up on our heart, to put them in our mind. In other words, to memorize them. And a lot of times we hear the Bible say, by the commandments of God, and we wonder, okay, well, what are the commandments of God? If we don't know what the commandments are, how will we know not to break them? Throughout the Old Testament and New, he says, honor my commandments. Keep them. But if you can't memorize them, if you haven't put them to heart, how will you know if you broke them? And the very first thing he says, the very first command he gives us, you shall have no other gods before me. Nothing shall come before God. Nothing in heaven, nothing on earth, nothing beneath the earth. Nothing. He must be number one in your life. Now, if he's not number one in your life, you're breaking the first command. You're off to a good start. I imagine that in your life you will break every one of these at least once. Because that's who we are. We're human. We make mistakes. God says, I want you to live by these to make you a better person, to make a better society, and to bring you closer to him. The very first thing he says is to have no other gods before him. Put nothing before God. The second thing he says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 4, he says, you shall not make yourselves a carved image, any likeness of anything in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the waters under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, 
but showing mercy to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. Now the Lord tells the children of Israel, I'm going to bless you and thousands of generations if you'll keep my commandments. But if you don't, up to four generations, they're going to be cursed because of your disobedience. And I'll bring your iniquities to them. He says the very first thing, put him first. The second thing, have no graven image, no statues, no paintings, no murals, no nothing of anything in heaven or beneath or on the earth and bow down to them. No sayings, no slogans, no nothing. To bow down to nothing. We are not to bow down to anything but God Almighty. We are not to take a knee for anything but God Almighty. We are not to take a knee for any reason. If they try to force you to, you are to rebel. Why? Because I am not bowing to nothing but to God Almighty. Now that's pretty strong in these days and times. We're going to get to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, for they would not bend. And they would not bow. God wants us to be one of those people who will not bend, who will not bow. To the things of the world, we know what is wrong, do not do it. Why? Because we serve God Almighty. He says that you shall not serve them. Not only will you not bow down to them, but you will not serve them. You will not give incense to them. You will not give favors to them. You will not leave fruits and vegetables to them. You will not bring food to them. You will do none of the sort. Because he is your God. And not those. So the very first thing, he says, have no other God before him. The second thing, do not make any of these images. Do not serve them. Do not bow down to them. Do not follow them in any form or fashion. For you are my children, and I am jealous. The third commandment that he gives us is, as you shall have, or you shall not take the name of the Lord, your God, in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Now what does that mean to take God's name in vain? <laughs> it means to use God's name as a byword. If you smash your finger and say, oh, Jesus, you better be praying. Lord, heal it. Better be following up those words, because otherwise it's a byword. And you've just used God's name in vain. If you say God and you talk about a structure that holds back water, you've just used God's name in vain. If you say, oh, and God together, because you're distressed, upset, whatever, you've just used God's name in vain. He will not hold you guiltless for using it. The Lord makes it very clear that our words are very powerful. You remember in Genesis chapter 1, the Lord says that he made, or chapter 2, he says he made man in his image. He gave us power in our words to speak life and death, just as he has. He spoke everything into existence. He gives us life and death in our words. We can either encourage somebody or crush them with our own words. So when we use God's name in vain, he does not hold us guiltless. He will bring it to our remembrance. He will call us out on it. And he will therefore shun the punishment of God upon us. Don't use bywords. Filler words. I mean, when I was going to college and my English professor, I was taking a, a speaking class. And so he gets up and he starts talking to the class and he's using profanity and bywords and stuff like that. And I'm sitting there going, really? So after the class, I asked him, I said, are, are, is this the way you're going to teach? He looks at me and says, why, did I offend you? I said, no, but you're uneducated. I said, anybody can talk like that off the street. I want to learn the English language in a way that I can use it appropriately and effectively. He goes, well, uh, I have a master's degree in English. Great. Use it, because you didn't tonight. And I, all I'm asking is, if this is what you're going to teach, I need to find another professor. I need to know how to use the language. Anybody can throw in by words. He said, well, I'll do better. Okay. So the next class, he was teaching, and he was talking, and he went to say something, and he looked straight at me, and he changed the word. 
And the kids go, what was that word? What does that mean? Look it up. Wow, now you're learning English. You're learning a way to use your English language in a way that you don't have to use filler. God says, let your yay be yay and your nays be nay. Don't make it confusing. Speak the truth. Speak it straightforward. Be bold about it and be straight to the point. Don't use bywords. Bywords get you in trouble. And when we use God's name in vain, we're using bywords. We're using his name as a byword. He says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. But the seven days is the Sabbath of the Lord, your God. In it you shall do no work. You, nor your sons, nor your daughters, nor your male servants, nor your female servants, nor your cattle, nor, nor your strangers who are in your, house, your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the seas and all the things that are in them and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now people say, well, if you don't worship God on Saturday, you're not keeping the Sabbath day holy. Jesus came along and didn't change it. He fulfilled it. He says, every day unto the Lord is holy. Not just one day. So live every day unto the Lord is holy. You should still have a day of rest. We choose to do it on Sundays, which is fine. It's a day of celebration. It's a day of resting. No, you shouldn't be doing anything on that day. No running to the malls to do your last minute shopping. It's, it's a day of rest. You should rest that day. All your household should rest. All your animals should rest. All your cars should rest. So I, you're using your car. He says, I want you to rest. Then he says, Honor your father and mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God has given you. Now, my mom really liked this one. She had always told me, honor your mother and father. Yes, ma'am. Or your days will be shortened. Yes, ma'am. What she meant is, I'll take you out. So you just have to realize, your days can be long if you honor them, or she can shorten them for you real quick. Well, that's not exactly what he was meaning, but it is similar. He says, honor your mother and father that your days will be lengthened, that your father in heaven shall lengthen your days and bless you accordingly by showing respect and honor to them. Does that mean you have to agree with them? Absolutely not. But even if you don't agree with them, you honor them in their position. If you're in their house, you obey their rules. If you want to discuss the rules, go to them and say, can we discuss these rules so we can discuss it and see how it goes. If they say, no, this is our rule, it's going to stay, then that's what it is. You either move out or honor their rules. That's your choice. But you must honor them. Say, well, I don't have to honor my parents now because I'm no longer in their house. Yes, you still do. In fact, the Jewish law was that you were had to obey them and honor them, to honor them, even after you had had your own family. And they were old and they were now decrepit and you had to honor them and take care of them and help them. And some of the things that Jesus dealt with is because they were saying, well, I'm going to give all their possessions to the church, so therefore I'm released of my duties. Jesus says, no, you're not. You're to honor them to the day they die. There is no releasement. And if you do not, then your days will be shortened. If you do, your days will be lengthened. And God will honor you. Now this is where we get into what most societies take from it. We've heard, keep God first, have nothing before him, do not use his name in vain, honor the Sabbath, and now number five, honor your mother and father. Now number six says, you shall not murder. Just plain and simple, you think. But people get this so confused because they hear people all the time saying, you shall not kill. If you're a Christian, you cannot kill. That's not what God said. He said, you shall not murder. 
If you go out and kill an animal to eat it, that's killing. That's not murdering. If you accidentally run somebody over and they die, that's not murder. That's killing them. In fact, the law calls it manslaughter. Then there's premeditated manslaughter where I waited in the car for you to get in front of me and run you over. There's somebody breaks into your house and you kill them. That's killing them. That's not murder. But if you went into their house and planted to kill them, that's premeditated murder. He says, thou shall not murder. Why? Because you've planned it out. You've sought to kill another. He says, thou shall not commit adultery. Now, for you that don't understand what adultery is, it means to have sex with somebody that you are not married to. That's adultery. Thou shall not commit adultery. He says, thou shall not steal. Don't take something that's not yours. Because that means you shall not steal what God has given to others. Then he follows that up with another one. Thou shall not bear false witness. Don't say something fake about one of your brothers. Don't bear a false witness. Oh, I think he did it. You don't know. Now you're gossiping. You're bearing a false witness against a brother because you thought you saw it. You thought you think he did it. But you don't know. You weren't even there. It sounds good. That's a lie. That's bearing false witness. We see it all the time in the news. They make a statement. Oh, that, this is what we... No, no, it's not. It wasn't even true. We see it repeated over and over again. People hold up their arms and say, don't shoot, because they said an officer shot a man that he held his arms up. It wasn't true. But the media like to run with it. They talk bad about it. And, you know, I can say bad things about the media because I know for sure I've had, lived through it. I was in a car accident at the age of 16. I put my arm through the windshield, took eight lacerations and 70 stitches. When it came out in the midst to be, my coach called my mom. How bad is it? She, the beast said that I had lost my arm. I was, in a, I was walking on the side of the street and a drunk ran me over and I lost my arm. I wasn't. I was driving a truck and we hit head on. Couldn't even get the story straight. How bad is it? He, the, the paper says he lost his arm. No, he caught eight lacerations and 70 stitches. Didn't lose his arm. And I'm reading this article. I said, you know what? This is what's wrong with the world today. They can't even get one thing straight. And it's supposed to be the news? It's not even accurate. Then you go 35 years fast forward, 40, 40 years fast forward, and you see it, they haven't changed. They make up stuff as they go because it may sound good because it might sell a paper. It's not the truth. And there's no recourse on it. They're bearing false witness against their brother. Don't get caught in it. If you don't know anything about the situation, shut your mouth. It's none of your business. If you weren't directly involved, if you were an eyewitness to it, now you have something to say. But if you weren't involved, you have no opinion. Don't go there. You have just opened yourself up to bearing false witness against your brother, and God will hold you accountable for it. We also call it gossiping. We don't know what we're talking about, but we're going to give in our opinion, and we throw out our opinion. We don't even know what the truth is. Don't go there. Then he says, the tenth one. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servants, or his female servants, or his oxen, or his donkey, or anything else that, yours, that, yours, that is yours neighbor's. Not his car, not his boat, not his jet ski. Thou shalt not covet. In other words, you shall not want it so bad that you've got to have it, and you're looking for a way to get it. Don't covet. Don't become the Joneses, you know, and if the Joneses are listening, but it's nothing personal. I've got to have whatever they've got i got to be as good as they've got. If they get a new car, I want a new car. If they get a new house, I want a new house. I've got to keep up with the Joneses or the neighbors or whoever it is. God says, don't play that game. 
It's detrimental to you. Don't go there. Don't covet something that is not yours. Because that will lead you astray. Every one of these rules that God gave us, every one of these laws that he gave us, these are my commandments, he says. Put them on your heart. Not only put them on your heart, but put them in your mind. So that everything you do, you're countering. Does that break any of those? No, nope, I'm good. Not only that, teach it to your children. So that they will know the laws of God and not break them. They were afraid to hear from God. And they told Moses, Moses, you speak to us and we'll listen. But don't let God speak to us or we'll surely die. And he gives them the commandments. And he says, he gives you these commandments to keep you from sinning. If you will do these commandments, you will not sin. But when you break one, it leads you into temptation and brings you into sin. But if you'll keep one and all of them in line, everything else will fall together. Jesus says, love your neighbors yourself. Honor your God. Keep his name. Have no other gods before you. Don't let nothing in life come between you and God. Not your family, not your spouse, not your, your possessions, not your job. Nothing comes between you and God. That you can stand before him and say, Father, I've loved you with all my heart. I have never bowed down to anything. That's a stiff neck. God wants us to be a stiff neck when it comes to that. Don't bow down. We have a lot of people going around today, bow down and say this, bow down and say that. No, we don't bow down. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I stand for the power of God Almighty. I am blessed by him, for him, and through him. And I will not bow, and I will not kneel to anybody or anything but him and him alone. This morning I ask you, will you stand for the glory of God? Will you stand and say, Lord, help me to have that zeal not to bow. Help me to stand, Lord, and keep your commitments, all your commandments that you've given to us. Lord, help me to stand and not lie about my life, not lie on my brother, not steal, not murder, not commit adultery, honor my mother and father, keep the Sabbath holy. Lord, let me have no graven image of anything before you. And Lord, let me not take your name in vain. Lord, control my mouth that it speaks only blessings from you. Control my tongue that it speaks no evil thing. With that you this morning, I want you to stand. We're going to pray. Let us pray. Father, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, the people that are at home, as they stand, Lord God, pour the power of God upon them. And Father God, we ask you to touch our lives and we submit ourselves to you. Lord, put the Ten Commandments in our mind, in our heart. Engrave them, Lord, in our heart, that we shall not break them. Burn them into our brain, Lord, that we will not forget them. And Lord, let us teach our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren your commandments. For this is your will, Father, and let us obey you in all these things. And Father, we ask it. Forgive us for not teaching as we should have, and Lord, forgive us for not living as we should have. But Lord, this day, change it all, that we may honor you and how we live, that we may praise you and seek your praise and your blessings in all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We want to thank you for watching and listening today. Before you sit back down, turn to the person next to you, look them straight in the eye and say, God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. See you next week.